The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Wheat School series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. In this episode, I talked to Jeremy Boychin, who's an agronomy research extension specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. Jeremy and I talk in a field near Blackie, Alberta, about staging your crop for a pre-harvest herbicide and some of the things you may want to keep in mind before you head on into the field with a sprayer. All right, we are standing in this wheat field and we are looking at glyphosate timing. So when it comes to glyphosate timing, the first thing that we want to do is get, a, get a general idea of what the field looks like. Um, so you want to find out where your lower areas are, where your higher areas are, and where they are in terms in terms of crop staging. Um, and this is going to help you get an idea of uh, how much of a difference there is between your earlier stuff and your later stuff. Um, once you do that, um, to get a, a good properly timed application of glyphosate you want to be timing that based on the least advanced part of your field so you're going to go to that part of your field and the first thing you're going to do is look at the peduncle um, which is the area of the stem below the head at the top of the stem and if that area has turned from green to yellow it's no longer translocating energy from the bottom of the plant up into the head so what this means is when you apply glyphosate onto that plant, it's not going to be moving that up as quickly. However, we still need to consider the kernel in the head as well, because if that is above 30%, it's still able to take in some of that glyphosate that you apply. So the next thing you want to do is grab a few of those heads and hand thresh them. When you hand thresh them, you're going to next thing, next thing you're going to do is do the, the thumbnail test. Um, so you'll squeeze it in between your finger and your thumb. If that kernel just squeezes and you can squeeze it down um, and it mushes, it's definitely not where you want it to be. You want it to be solid. And then when you push your thumbnail into there, you should get that thumbnail to indent and stay in that kernel. If it pushes back out, you're not at 30% yet. So you want to make sure that indent stays. So the least advanced stages are the ones that are still able to take that glyphosate um, that you've applied to the crop and take it up into the kernel. So you want to make sure that you are timing your glyphosate appropriately to the least advanced part because that's the part that we're worried about taking that that glyphosate in after you apply glyphosate the next step is to make sure that you have the proper pre-harvest interval um, with most you're sitting in that seven day stage but it's important for you to look at the label and make sure you follow the label recommendations there's a variety of different glyphosates out there so make sure you're checking based on the glyphosate or the the product that you're using um, and you don't want to be harvesting before that that pre-harvest interval when you're going in with the attention of using glyphosate it should be based on um, whether you have weed pressure in that field and whether you're looking to control some of the weeds in the field. Um, so you're looking for perennial weeds, thistles, um, perennial sow thistle, uh, and potentially any annuals that you're worried about going to seed. So that's, that's what you're going in there and getting an idea of. If you do decide um, that you want to use glyphosate to help control some of those weeds and you then you're making sure that it's timed appropriately for the least advanced part of your crop um, So that's that's the general approach approach that you want to be taking with glyphosate when you're using it as, as a pre-harvest So if glyphosate is applied too early um, and it is taken up into those kernels It will be detected at the ports or at the end users um, and the risk there is that we end up potentially losing some of our, our, our end users and our markets um, internationally. Uh, and obviously with Canada being a, uh, an international market, um, maintaining these markets is very, is very important. So we have to make sure uh, that we're using this tool appropriately um, as a pre-harvest weed control um, so we can maintain those markets and we can maintain that tool.